Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be making this wildlife painting. First, I'm gonna get the nice base layer on. This painting honestly kind of reminds me of my grandpa and my spirit animals. I know not everyone believes in stuff like that, but I believe in stuff like that. So I've always felt connected to like hawks and eagles and such. Honestly, all birds of prey I was going for a hawk, but this actually turns out to look more like an eagle, so it is what it is. I was still absolutely love how this painting came out. So we're just getting a really light base because we're gonna do a lot of like building up with this painting. But hawks I've always really resonated with um, in my indigenous language of the Taino language. They are known as Garaguaro. And I apologize if I mispronounce that. I'm still learning the language as a way to honor my ancestors and my grandparents. I used to take care of my grandma every day. And when I was little, we would pray to a castique statue, which was like a Native American chief. And I recently learned that we were in fact indigenous. I just thought maybe like that was in her spiritual practice. So... It's my way of giving back to them and paying my homage to it. Now I'm going to dive in some of this darker color. Like I said, like we're going to start kind of light here and then really like build our way up. You're going to see so many different layers going on with the beak, um, and especially in like the chest area of the bird. Now we're gonna go in with this ochre color, which is like a yellow, and it ends up like kind of bleeding with the beak, but it works out beautifully. Again, I probably will go in and do a few more layers over this section. So we're gonna keep it how it is for now. And now we're gonna dab some water on and go with this like burnt umber color, or raw umber. I'm not really sure what you would wanna call it. So I'm making like puddles, but as you can see, I'm going to go in with a heavily loaded brush and really like just kind of place that color in there and it will actually space out like on its own. I wanted it to look pretty organic because no bird, nothing in nature is perfect, you know? So I was really kind of just going with the flow. I kind of do that with a lot of my paintings. I'll sketch it out and then I'll just kind of go with whatever really I'm feeling. And now I'm going to go in and do the head of the bird with an, uh, like a light brown wash. And I really loved like how those first little feathers came out. It really started to like begin to look fierce. Now we're going to fill the space and we're going to let the paint do its thing. I'm gonna leave a couple of little white areas, but I'm mostly just gonna let this color melt together. One thing I like about hawks and eagles are they're birds of intelligence. They teach you to rise above. Nothing is ever too difficult. You know what I mean? Like, yes, we get our obstacles in life, but if we learn to just be resilient and rise above, we can't let everything get to us in life. We have to, you know, put some work in ourselves. Going with the flow, and they just kind of like, it's like the way they soar in the sky and stuff. Like, it's just so effortless. And I guess that's what I was trying to like translate with this painting. Like, it's not perfect, but it flows effortlessly. We're gonna do some wings. We're gonna take a dark brown, almost black, and just take that wet brush and just kind of let it let it go. I'm using like the very tip of my brush to get these like fine lines. Some of them end up end up like washing out a little bit, but that's okay because like I said, we're building on like lots of layers here, so that's just what we want to do.
When we're shading the face in, and I noticed the beak was too small for this bird. So I wanted to go back in and make it fuller, give it more personality, make it more fierce. And as you can see, like I keep doing these little like feather motions, especially like around the eye because that's how I think the feathers would go on a bird. Kind of make their way like around the eye, highlighting it. I'm gonna do some more of the feathers on the head. There we go with the under eye feathers. I tried to just use the same dark wash over and over and over again because I was honestly scared of making it too dark on the eye and then the eye wouldn't be like in focus anymore. Now I'm, I'm mixing up the color for the eye. I'm going to use like an orangish brown because I really wanted this eye to pop. I wanted to have depth. I wanted it to really you know like stand out because they say eyes are the gateway to the soul and i really love these animals so i really wanted to capture their essence And as I do these final feather motions around the eye, I really think that this piece comes to life. It helps it kind of jump off the page, gives it that little like fuzziness look, like those feathers are real. Now I'm doing the pupil, and I was going really slow because I did not want to mess this up. I didn't want it to spill over and stuff. It kind of did a little bit, but it's okay. I'm going to end up going through. Wow, look at that eye pop as soon as I put that black outline on the outside. To really make it, like, it's a little darkened up so the iris really pops on this bird. Now I'm going to darken in the neck and the beak one more time. I added a highlight to it so it kind of makes the beak pop. Because in real life, like if the sun was shining on it or light was shining on this bird, it would have that nice little shiny spot on the beak. Darkening up the pupil and then I will put a highlight in there too.
Now I'm putting in these final feathers and you'll see that this bird really, really comes to life. I'm so pleased with how this turned out and if you enjoyed watching this, be sure to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment.